Hello everybody, my name is Robius and welcome to a new episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I compare events in a selected character's life within one of the Assassin's Creed games to the actual history the individual lived through. As always, beware of major story spoilers. For today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the history of Pope Alexander VI's daughter, Lucrezia Borgia. As is customary, I'll begin this episode by sharing with you her pre-game history, which will inform us on her background prior to ACB, then her in-game history, which we see depicted in the game, and lastly, we will analyze the differences between what happens in the game to the real historical events of this woman's life. Starting with the pre-game history, Lucrezia Borgia was born in the town of Subiaco, outside of Rome, on April 18, 1480, and was the daughter of Rodrigo Borgia, who later became Pope Alexander VI, and his mistress Vanozza de Catani. Little information exists concerning her childhood other than the fact that she was predominantly raised by her mother, but thanks to her father's high position in society, she was well educated and lived in luxury. Since she was the daughter of Rodrigo, who would later become the Pope, he used Lucrezia as a political tool in negotiation by engaging her to men he wished to become his allies. By the time she was 11 years old, she had already been betrothed twice, however, her father had soon cancelled both of these betrothals since they were no longer convenient to his cause. When Rodrigo officially became the pontiff, he arranged for Lucrezia to marry Giovanni Sforza, the lord of Pesaro, so as to establish an alliance with the Sforza family, and therefore, on June 12, 1493, they were married. Unfortunately, by 1497, the Borgias no longer had a use for the Sforzas, and instead the Pope wanted to create a more profitable alliance for his cause. Alexander VI soon demanded that Giovanni agree to a separation, however, he refused. In consequence, the Pope stated that the couple's marriage had never been consummated and was therefore invalid, although this was most probably not the case. This separation came about after the Borgia paid off the Sforza family and humiliated Giovanni with these claims of impotence. Certain records claim that the Pope challenged Giovanni to prove his manhood by making love to a woman while being observed by members of both families, to which he refused, however this is not historically confirmed. Nevertheless, in vengeance, Giovanni made claims that Lucrezia had participated in incestuous acts with both her father, the Pope, and her brother, Cesare Borgia. However, due to the pressures placed on the Pope, he needed to provide sworn testimonies that Lucrezia was still a virgin, even though historically speaking, she was pregnant at this point in time. Caterina Sforza, she whore of Forli, has at last been brought to heel. Ha! No one kneels as low as Lucrezia Borgia. Who put you up to this? Was it your brother or your father? Perhaps a bit of both? Perhaps at the same time? Chiudi la bocca! None speak ill of the Borgia! There are no official records on who the father of the child was, but certain historians believe it may have either been Cesare, Giovanni, or perhaps even another individual named Perotto, who is thought to have been her lover during the annulment process of her marriage. In 1498, Lucrezia's alleged first child was born, and was named Giovanni Borgia, although historians refer to him as the infant of Rome. However, in 1501, two official declarations, known as papal bulls, were released concerning the child referring to him firstly as Cesare's illegitimate child from a prior relationship, however, the second bull recognized him as the son of the Pope. It's interesting to know that neither of these listed Lucrezia as the mother. However, most records cannot be trusted for these segments, and therefore the child's true origins remain a mystery to this day. It would be around this point where we first met Lucrezia Borgia in ACB, during the fictional siege of Monte di Gioni. Historically, following her separation from Giovanni in later 1498, she married her second husband, Alfonso of Aragon, to increase the Borgia's alliance with Naples. Together, they had one son, named Rodrigo of Aragon, who was born in 1499. The second union did not last very long, as the Borgias offered Lucrezia more titles of nobility while Alfonso was alienated, and later, in 1500, he was murdered while in Rome. Once again, people began to blame the Borgias' scheming for this incident, and certain historians believe that Cesare, or his assassin Micaletto, may have killed Alfonso since the Borgia duke had recently allied with the King of France against Naples, which would have strained some of the other alliances. However, once again, this cannot necessarily be considered historical fact. Following the death of her second husband, Lucrezia's father, the Pope, arranged a third marriage for his daughter with Alfonso I d'Este, Duke of Ferrera, in 1502. Together, she and her husband had multiple children, and it is said that she became an acceptable and appropriate woman of society in this period of time. She was also eventually joined by her supposed child, Giovanni, who was now introduced as her half-brother due to the earlier cover-up. In 1503, when her father died, her life became far less recorded and less eventful as she took up the role of a wife and was no longer mixed into the complex political plays of the Borgia family. Unfortunately, certain records seem to claim that both she and her husband were occasionally unfaithful, leading to a few affairs, including one with the poet Pietro Bembo, who may possibly have been the inspiration for the character Pietro Rossi, who was shown to be her lover in ACB. However, the timeline was different as the fictional Rossi was with Lucrezia while Cesare was still alive. 
Lucrezia eventually died while in Ferrara at the age of 38 on June 24, 1519, from complications which arose following the birth of her eighth child. She was then subsequently buried in the convent of Corpus Domini. In summary, the differences between Lucrezia's actual life and her representation in ACB were rather minor due to the general lack of in-depth information concerning her life's events. Firstly, the game depicted Lucrezia as taking part in the fictional siege of Monte di Gioni, which evidently did not take place. Secondly, although there were historical implications of incestuous relationships that Lucrezia may have had with her father, Rodrigo, and her brother, Cesare, these were not necessarily factual, as was shown to be the case in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Thirdly, to follow up from the previous point, Lucrezia did not have an affair with the fictional poet Pietro Rossi simply to make Cesare jealous, as was shown in Brotherhood. However, it led to an interesting sequence where Ezio saved the man during a play. Lastly, since Ezio's representation as an assassin was fake, the entire segment where she tried to seduce him when he searched for da Vinci's paintings while in Ferrera was not factual, although it was indicative of her apparent unfaithful demeanor while living with her third husband. Despite these changes though, considering the limited information we have on Lucrezia Borgia, I believe we can consider her to be very well represented in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And with that final fact, we have finished another episode of Assassin's Creed The Real History. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, I highly recommend you try out one of the Assassin's Creed games. Thank you all for watching. Please leave any suggestions for future characters from any of the Assassin's Creed games that you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Please rate, comment, and subscribe for more episodes, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.